What's up everybody? TXR here. And today I am on my first ride on the new shocks. Not really sure what to expect with them. But I got with the drag specialty adjustable shocks. I got them in 12 inch, got them in black. They uh, replaced the stock rear shocks on the 2015 iron, which anybody who has an iron from before 2016 knows are absolute shit. However, the installation, as you'll see in another video, was so easy. The installation was so easy, it just felt like I was doing something wrong. You know, it was too easy for what it was. Maybe it was just supposed to be that easy. This particular setup didn't come with a bunch of washers or spacers or anything like that. Everything was kind of already in the shock. First little test, let's see how it does on this bump right here. Because this one actually does kind of hurt. Wow, I still felt it a lot, but that wasn't nearly as bad. All right, and the way I've got the shocks in, they are as they came, as far as the length, which means, again, they're the adjustable shocks, so they're 12 inches, the model I got they go a half inch either way so 11 and a half to 12 and a half and they ship at 11 and a half all the way down it comes with some grease to you know lube up the eyelids as far as all the spacers and bearings and bushings whatever that all comes pre-assembled so it's not something I had to worry about and it went in okay, just, you know, jacked up the bike with a uh, bike jack. Got it to where the back tire, basically to where it would just slightly start to spin freely and then lowered the jack just a fraction more so that the tire is held on real good because the instructions that come with it, it says to take the weight off the rear tire but don't lift the rear tire off the ground. So that's how you do that. I did that, took my rear bolt out. Needed a uh, three-quarter inch spanner wrench for the open-ended side to get the nut on the inside of the rear axle. Well, not the axle, you know what I mean, though. Um, and then a T50 and a three-quarter inch drive ratchet, or three-eighths drive ratchet. And that was about it. You know, so I added just a tiny little bit of preload. These aren't like HD shocks or anything like that. They're just, you know, standard duty. And so far, not bad. You know, I'm going over all these bumps and it's not killing me. Man, I tell you what though. The way the front shocks are compressing from brake, from braking. Which, yeah, some of that's brake dive, uh, brake dive, but not even that. Brake dive I tend to associate with the front brake because it pitches all the way forward. Even just on the rear brake there, that wasn't bad. But, yeah, they're compressed more. So you definitely notice, uh, you know, how shitty the front suspension is stocked once you put something else on the back, anything else so far. So far, the ride's very smooth. Over that little bit right there, those big uh, uh, seams in the concrete on that bridge, I always feel those a lot and I didn't feel them at all just now. I almost forgot to mention them because I seriously didn't feel them. But yeah, it's uh, so far so good. They've been installed for about an hour now, an hour and a half. And where the video cuts on, I am less than a mile down the road. But yeah, it's, uh, it's all right so far. I'm gonna take a break for a second, go over here and get me some Petro and pick back up when I've got a little bit more. Not a whole lot of stuff to go on right here. So, I'll be back. Uh, 
Well, I can tell you now, they've got a, I don't know, I'm not like an expert with this stuff, so I don't know what this is called, but it's very springy. Going down the road, I can feel it really bouncy in the back. You know, just slight little waves in the road surface causes quite a bit of a, it's just a, it's just a bounce, you know, it kind of does that a little bit. It's, not particularly bad at all. I just feel it, but from what I understand, uh, I've got to break these in, and apparently that's one of the things that uh, that goes. This is going from Sean Smoke. He's a uh, moto vlogger out of Oregon or Washington, one of the two. And he has a 2010-883. A few years ago, he put on Progressive 412s. And the qualities he described is what I'm feeling. And he does note on that video that once they broke in, uh, I don't remember how long, a couple hundred miles, a few hundred, that they were perfect. So I'm not going to discount them for that. I feel those bumps, which are normally the ones that have me, you know, forward and up on my pegs. I feel them, but they're not, they're not nearly as bad. Yeah, that was still pretty rough, but just because it's a drop off. Okay, so. So far, so good. Now, it's not a massive improvement. It wasn't supposed to be a massive improvement. All it was supposed to do is just give me a little bit of relief from some of these really back-breaking bumps. And so far, it has done exactly that. I'm a little paranoid now about the front. I mean, the forks are compressed so much just sitting on it that... I mean, I mean, most bumps I'm going to want to be slowing down for, it's just common. And it makes me want to go a little bit slower over some of them, or at least, you know, kind of get back and get on the throttle a little bit so that I can rock off of the front end just a little bit with some of the weight. Just worried about fork seals going out. What the fuck are you doing, dude? I've got to stop something. Although you've already been hit, so you're probably just a little bit paranoid. I can get that. So far, there are no rideability issues. If anything, I think I kind of like the stance of the bike a little. It's not just that. I'm not touching on the seat yet because I need more time to review that. As far as first ride, I'll give you notes on it. I've been out here for 40, 45 minutes now, and my ass hurts. But these things are saw, or these things are hard when you get them, so they need to be broken in a bit. And I know that's so why I'm not going to give it a review on the first ride. But so far, I like these shocks. They smooth out the ride quite a bit, and that's all I was really looking for. And they'll get better as they get worn into, and... I mean, hell, just making some adjustments on them will make a difference. I haven't 
really done much at all. And I'm still actually thinking that I eventually want to bring these up to 12 inches. I'm not sure yet if I want to do that while I've still got all the, uh, while the forks are still completely stuck. Oh yeah, that bumps a lot better too. That was jarring before there, I just felt it. But again, you know, it's first impressions. What I may want to do is bring the length of the shocks up a little bit and take away that little bit of preload I've got on there so that it'll be a more cush ride. Uh, so far, I'm not bottoming out at all, and I'm, as of the time of getting on this, I'm 265 pounds naked, and I got some, you know, Harley riding boots on, and jeans, and wallet, and helmet, and leather vest, so we'll call that about 275 pounds I'm sitting on this bike with, and I haven't bottomed out once. Not even close. I haven't felt the suspension strain yet. Not the rear. So people here are talking about... Well, I mean, mostly it was the Progressive 412s, which is close enough to what these are. You know, they're talking about how it's really stiff ride. Yeah, it is. Um, talking about they bottom out and they're like 200, 220 pounds, some shit like that. Well, <clears throat> you lie. Either you weigh more, your bike weighs more, as in you've added like saddlebags and have them loaded up with fucking tungsten or something, or you totally like have no preload on there and one of the first two options. The shocks are nice. I think once they break in a little bit, <clears throat> I won't feel the spring reacting to every single bump. I believe that's what's supposed to happen on the break in as you lose that. And you know what? I might not like that as much. I kind of like it like this. I mean, it's a little bouncy. It could be irritating if I'm, you know, at highway speeds and trying to talk. But, for everything else, that's, it's not bad at all. It's a hell of a lot better in stock, that's the point. I paid $270 and spent 30 minutes working, not very hard, and got something that is a lot better than stock. So I'm going to leave it at that for right now, and we're going to say, ride safe. And I'll follow up again later, I'm sure. Deuces.